UFC Fight Night Hermanson vs. Pfeiffer is this Saturday, and for each fight, including the prelims, I'm going to go through the results of my six data science prediction models, the results of 1,000 fight simulations, discuss fighter sets and advantages, show you a data analysis for each matchup, give you my final picks, and show you bets that you might want to consider based on these models and data, along with their probabilities and potential returns. Please like and subscribe if you find this interesting, informative, or helpful as it helps keep me motivated in creating these videos, running this data and analysis, the prediction models, fight simulations, charts and graphs, and updating the site takes hours every day and week, so I'd greatly appreciate it. Let's jump right in. Let's take a look at the results of the last 10 events. We're averaging 66% accuracy across every single fight. First fight, we have Daniel Marcos versus Ayori Kui Lang. Analyzing the overall stats, both fighters are evenly matched in terms of height, weight, and reach. Daniel Marcos maintains an undefeated record, which might reflect a psychological edge. Aori Quilang, with more fight experience, has higher significant strike rates per minute, 5.31 versus 4.88, and is more accurate, 56.89% versus 48.14%, suggesting a striking advantage for him. However, Marcos has a substantially better takedown accuracy, 50% versus 46%, which could be pivotal in controlling the fight. The radar chart comparison shows that Aori Quilang exceeds in significant strike accuracy in defense, indicating a more refined striking game. Marcos, on the other hand, has a better takedown defense, pointing to a potential strategy of keeping the fight standing where he's comfortable or exploiting takedown opportunities effectively. The bar chart analysis highlights Marcos' superior takedown defense and suggests that while Aori Quilang absorbs more strikes, his striking accuracy is superior. This could lead to a strategy where Aori Quilang would want to maintain distance and leverage his striking, while Marcos might look to close the distance and utilize takedowns. Differential stats suggest that Marcos has a slight edge in avoiding significant strikes and in takedown percentage, whereas Aori Quilang has a better record of landing strikes. This could hint at Marcos's strategy of avoiding damage and looking for openings to score takedowns. Simulations present a dominant win probability for Daniel Marcos with an 87.3% success rate over Aori Quilang's 12.7%. This considerable gap suggests a significant advantage for Marcos, potentially due to his well-rounded skill set and undefeated record. The predictive model chart shows a strong consensus across various models favoring Daniel Marcos. With models like logistic regression, support vector machines, and 1000 fight simulations showing high confidence in his victory, it reflects a comprehensive agreement on his likely success. Taking all data into account, the final probability gives Daniel Marcos a 63% chance of winning. The models and simulations project Marcos as the likely victor, possibly utilizing his grappling advantage to control Aerie Quilang and mitigate his striking proficiency. Based on the detailed statistics and model predictions, it seems probable that this fight may go the distance, with Marcos leveraging his takedown and grappling skills to secure the decision victory. Next fight, we have Melsik Bagdasarian versus Haider Emil. Both fighters match up evenly in height, reach, and weight, but Bagdasarian's record of 8 wins, 2 losses, and a significant strike rate of 5.28 per minute and a 63% accuracy give him a notable advantage in stand-up exchanges. Haider Emil, undefeated at 8 wins, 0 losses, does not match the volume of Bagdasarian, but boasts a higher significant strike accuracy at 74% indicating precision in his attacks. However, both have shown no inclination for takedowns, which could signal a predominantly striking-focused bout. The radar chart shows a stark contrast in their styles. Bagdasarian appears to have an overwhelming advantage in striking volume, which could overwhelm Emil. Conversely, Emil shows superior takedown defense, which might not play a significant role given Bagdasarian's striking preference. Emil's key to success may lie in his ability to defend and counter effectively amidst Bagdasarian's striking barrages. The bar chart analysis highlights Bagdasarian's significant strike output, which dwarfs Emil's, suggesting that Bagdasarian could dictate the pace of the fight with his aggressive striking. Emil's singular bar for average submission attempts per 15 minutes stands out, but with Bagdasarian's zero takedown average, it's uncertain whether Emil will find an opportunity to bring his grappling into play. In conclusion, the data points to Bagdasarian's favor, with a probability of 66% for victory. Given the striking prowess and aggressive output Bagdasarian has shown, combined with Emil's precision but lower volume, the fight is likely to be a striking duel. Considering Bagdasarian's volume and power, this contest 
might well end by a knockout or TKO in Bagdasarian's favor, unless Emil can strategically employ his grappling to shift the dynamics. Next fight, we have Zach Pauga versus Bogdan Guskov. Zach Pauga, standing 6 feet 2 inches tall and weighing in at 205 pounds, brings to the table a significant strike rate of 4.44 per minute with a remarkable accuracy of 66%. At 6 foot 3 inches tall, Guskov shares the same reach and weight, but has a lower strike rate of 2.12 per minute at an accuracy of 37%. Paga's takedown accuracy at 9% may not be impressive, but it surpasses Guskov's complete lack of takedowns, giving Paga a varied arsenal. The radar chart reflects Paga's striking and takedown defense superiority. He shows significant leads in all aspects except for takedown accuracy where neither fighter has marked a good presence. This suggests Paga is likely to maintain a standing fight, leveraging that striking distance. The bar chart contrasts the fighter's stats starkly, with Paga's bars consistently surpassing Guskov's, especially in significant strikes per minute and accuracy. This visual representation indicates that Paga is expected to be the more aggressive and precise striker. Differential stats show Paga's advantages in striking attempts, strikes landed, and avoidance, which means he's likely to control a stand-up game. Guskov's smaller advantages suggest he needs to significantly adapt to counter Paga's offensive output. Simulations give Paga a narrow lead with a win rate of 53.6% over Guskov's 46.4%. This suggests that while Paga is favored, the fight could be closely contested, with Guskov having a puncher's chance. Predictive models overwhelmingly support Paga, indicating confidence in his ability to secure the win. This consensus across various analytical models strengthens the forecast of Paga's victory. Considering all data points, the final prediction gives Zach Paga a 63% chance of winning. The analysis heavily favors Paga's striking skills and suggests that his ability to land the significant strikes with precision will be key. Guskov's path to victory seems narrow, needing to exploit any potential weaknesses in Paga's game. With Paga's striking advantage and Guskov's lack of takedown threat, this fight is likely to end with a KO slash TKO victory for Zach Paga. Next fight, we have Max Griffin versus Jeremiah Wells. Max Griffin has a height and reach advantage over Jeremiah Wells, which he complements with a higher significant strike rate per minute at 4.09 versus 2.52. Although Wells has a slightly better significant strike accuracy, Griffin's greater output and experience could be key in a striking battle. The radar chart shows Griffin with a superior takedown defense and significant strike defense, suggesting he could be well equipped to keep the fight on the feet and utilize his reach advantage. Wells, however, has a better takedown accuracy, which may allow him to bring the fight to the ground and use his grappling skills. The bar chart analysis points to Griffin's higher rate of significant strikes landed per minute, which could pressure Wells throughout the fight. Wells' superior average of submissions attempted indicates he may look to take the fight to the ground to avoid Griffin striking. The differential stats indicate Griffin's advantage in striking attempts and avoidance, which may allow him to dictate the pace and location of the fight. Wells has fewer standout statistics here, suggesting he may need to employ a more strategic approach to overcoming Griffin striking. The fight simulations show Griffin winning 68.1% of the time, indicating a strong likelihood of his victory based on historical data and fight metrics. Wells' win in the simulation are significantly fewer, highlighting the uphill battle he's probably going to face. The prediction models are telling a little bit of a different story, as they're mostly predicting Jeremiah Wells, however two of them are predicting Max Griffin. With all things considered and the stat differentials taking everything into account, the final prediction is going to go opposite of the models. I'm going to lean towards Max Griffin with a probability of about 57% to beat Jeremiah Wells. The fight is expected to play out with Griffin utilizing his striking and reach to maintain control, while Wells will likely need to find openings for takedowns and submissions. Given that striking differential and Griffin's defensive capabilities, the likely outcome could be a decision win for Max Griffin. Next fight, we have Devin Clark versus Marcin Prochnio. Both of these guys are well matched physically, with Clark standing at 6 feet tall and Prochnio standing at 6 feet 3 inches tall, both weighing just above the 205 pound mark. Clark's significant strike accuracy is slightly higher at 72% compared to Prochnio's 64%. But Prochnio leads in significant strikes landed per minute at 5.4 versus 3, 
indicating a more aggressive striking approach. The radar chart reveals that Clark has a more well-rounded game with better takedown defense, which could neutralize Prochnio's grappling advantage. However, Prochnio shows superior striking accuracy, which he will likely capitalize on. The bar chart emphasizes Clark's takedown average and accuracy, suggesting he may attempt to take the fight to the ground, contrasting Prochnio's lack of takedowns. Prochnio's higher striking rate is evident, but he will need to overcome Clark's defenses to make it count. Differential stats give Clark the advantage in strike attempts and takedown attempts, which could allow him to control where the fight takes place. Prachnio's advantages are not as pronounced, indicating he may need to rely on his striking accuracy to outperform Clark. Fight simulations are relatively even but slightly favor Clark, indicating that while he may have the edge, the fight could be closely contested, with Prachnio having a strong chance at victory. Predictive models show a split here, with some favoring Clark and others favoring Prochnio, reflecting the competitive nature of this matchup. This mixed prediction suggests the fight could go either way, with each fighter having a fair chance to win. I calculate a probability of 57%, with the prediction leaning towards Devin Clark. Considering Clark's more balanced skill set and Prochnio's striking prowess, the fight will likely be a tactical battle. However, Clark's ability to defend takedowns and control the pace may lead him to a decision victory provided he can successfully manage Prochnio's striking offense. Next fight, we have Loma Lubunmi versus Bruno Brazil. Both of them match up in the women's strawweight category, with both of them weighing in at 115 pounds. While Bruno boasts a reach advantage and a higher significant strike accuracy at 75%, compared to Loma's 63%, Loma counters with a more frequent striking rate and a higher takedown average. Despite Bruno's reach and precision, Loma's agility and grappling could play a key role in controlling the fight's pace. The radar chart depicts Bruno's superior striking accuracy and defense, suggesting she could outmaneuver Loma in a stand-up battle. However, Loma's advantages in takedown defense and accuracy hint at her potential to dictate the fight if it goes to the ground, making it a classic striker versus grappler fight. In the bar chart, we see a detailed comparison of the fighter's stats. Loma exhibits commendable takedown defense, which could be crucial against Bruna's striking onslaught. Loma's balanced approach between offense and defense might give her the edge in a prolonged contest. Looking into the differential stats, Loma's ability to defend against takedowns and her aggressive striking attempts stand out. Bruna, while having a significant advantage in striking avoidance, will need to maximize her reach and precision to keep Loma at bay. The simulation strongly favored Loma with an 83.5% win rate over Bruna. This overwhelming statistical advantage suggests that Loma's grappling and takedown defense are expected to neutralize Bruna's striking prowess effectively. According to the prediction models, Loma is the favored fighter. The models show a clear consensus, albeit recognizing Bruna's striking as a factor, the grappling aspect seems to tip the scales in Loma's favor. Considering all of the data combined, I calculate Loma to have a 69% chance of winning. The analysis indicates that while Bruna may have the striking advantage, Loma's superior grappling and takedown defense are likely to dictate the fight, suggesting that Loma might secure a victory, possibly through a decision, leveraging her control time and ground game throughout the match. Next fight, we have Demir Hatsevich versus Bolahi Oki. Demir has a record of 14 wins, 7 losses, stands at 5 feet 9 inches tall, and brings a notable takedown accuracy of 56%, although his significant strike rate per minute is a moderate 3.4. On the flip side, Balahi Oki, although less experienced at 8 wins, 1 loss, showcases an impressive significant strike rate per minute of 11.5, indicating a high volume striker. Oki's reach advantage and impressive striking stats could be key factors, but Hatsovich's experience in ground game could level that playing field. The radar chart displays Oki's striking prowess with a significant edge in significant strikes landed. Hatsovich, however, appears to have a better rounded game with higher takedown defense, suggesting a strategic advantage if the fight goes to the ground. Oki's graph points towards a preference for keeping the fight where he can leverage his striking volume. The bar chart solidifies Oki's advantage in significant strikes per minute, an area where he outshines Hatsovich substantially. Hatsovich, however, maintains a strong takedown defense, which might be critical in neutralizing Oki's offense. It's a clear striker versus grappler dynamic, with each fighter having the tools to dominate in their area of strength. I calculate a probability of 70% in favor of Oki. The key 
to the fight is likely to be influenced by Oki's striking ability, potentially leading to a KO TKO if he can keep the fight standing. However, Hatsovich's takedown defense could be the key to weathering that storm and seeking an opportunity to exploit any gaps in Oki's grappling arsenal. Next fight, we have Trevin Giles versus Carlos Prates. Giles, at 31 years old, has a 16 wins, 5 loss record. He brings a significant strike per minute rate of 3 with a 60% accuracy. On the other side, Prates boasts a higher significant strike rate at 4.8 per minute with a 64% accuracy, showcasing his striking prowess. While Giles has a notable takedown average of 1.3 and a 55% accuracy, Prates shows no record for takedowns, suggesting his fight strategy may heavily favor stand-up combat. The radar chart comparison accentuates Carlos Prates' dominance in striking, with higher percentages across significant strikes landed and accuracy indicating his potential to control the stand-up game. Trevin Giles, however, has a more balanced profile with a strong takedown defense, suggesting that he could neutralize Prates' striking by bringing the fight to the ground. In the bar chart, we see a stark contrast in the fighters' profiles. Giles' statistics dominate in the grappling domain, with takedown averages in defense significantly higher than Prates, who shows a clear preference for striking. This chart hints at a classic striker versus grappler matchup, with Giles likely to seek takedowns to mitigate Prates' striking advantage. Considering the stats and the precision models, the fight between Trevin Giles and Carlos Prates leans towards a striking clinic from Prates if it remains standing, but could swiftly change tides if Giles successfully imposes his grappling game. I calculate a 66% chance in favor of Carlos Prates, hinting at the likelihood of a victory by decision or possibly a KO TKO if he maintains his striking advantage throughout the fight. Next fight, we have Rodolfo Vieira versus Armin Petrosian. In the overall stat comparison, Vieira, while being an inch shorter than Petrosian, carries a significant 2-inch reach advantage, which could be pivotal in grappling exchanges. With a significant strike landing per minute rate that's lower than Petrosian's, Vieira's statistical strength lies in his ground game, boasting a takedown average of 3.7 and a high submission average of 1.4, indicating his preference for taking the fight to the mat. The radar chart analysis shows Vieira excelling in takedown defense and takedown accuracy while Petrosian's profile shines in striking, with a higher significant strike accuracy in defense. This graphical representation clearly delineates Vieira's grappling prowess against Petrosian's striking finesse. The bar chart comparison underscores Petrosian's superior striking accuracy and defense, which contrasts with Vieira's grappling stats, where he leads in both takedown and submission averages. The visual data suggests that Vieira will look to impose his will on the ground, while Petrosian will aim to keep the fight standing. The differential stats highlight Vieira's reach and ground game advantages with more takedown attempts and higher takedown accuracy. For Petrosian, the advantage lies in his striking, with more significant strike attempts and a higher strike percentage outlining the classic striker versus grappler matchup as well. The simulation results from 1,000 fights give a slight edge to Petrosian with a win rate of 57.6% over Vieira's 42.4%, suggesting that Petrosian's striking could be the key factor in the majority of these outcomes. Majority of the prediction models are leaning towards Armin Petrosian, with only two leaning towards Rodolfo Vieira. Taking into account all analytics and models, I calculate Petrosian has a 54% chance of victory, the fight's outcome slightly leans towards his striking ability being the decisive factor. However, Vieira's ground game remains a threat, and it could sway the fight in his favor if he manages to close the distance. I expect this to be a battle between Petrosian's precise striking and Vieira's aggressive grappling. This will probably end with a Petrosian victory by decision due to his defensive skills and his striking accuracy. Next fight, we have Michael Johnson versus Darius Flowers. Michael Johnson's experience is evident with a record of 22 wins and 19 losses compared to Darius Flowers' 12 wins, 6 losses, and 1 draw. Johnson has a slight height advantage and a reach advantage, which would probably help him keep that distance, but Flowers showcases a superior significant strike accuracy at 60% against Johnson's 40%. Johnson's lower takedown average and accuracy suggests that he will probably prefer to keep the fight standing, rely on his southpaw stance to deliver those strikes. The radar chart visualizes the fighter's capabilities, where Flowers has an edge in significant strike accuracy and defense, but Johnson displays better takedown defense. 
The contrast in their profiles suggests Flowers will look to maintain a striking battle, while Johnson could utilize his takedown defense to counter Flowers' aggressive approach. The bar chart pits Johnson's takedown defense and significant strike defense against Flowers' striking and takedown offense. Flowers appears to have the advantage in landing significant strikes and executing takedowns, while Johnson's defense in both areas is notable. Differential stats highlight that Johnson has a higher total win count and has defended more takedowns than Flowers has attempted, which may deter Flowers from grappling. However, Flowers has a higher percentage in striking accuracy, indicating he might be more efficient in landing shots when the exchange blows. The 1000 fight simulation outcome leans towards Flowers with a 57% win rate over Johnson's 43%, suggesting that Flowers striking could be the decisive factor in a majority of simulated outcomes. Majority of the prediction models are leaning towards Michael Johnson. So, taking everything into account, I calculate a 56% chance of victory for Michael Johnson. This prediction considers Johnson's experience and defensive skills, which would nullify Flowers' striking advantage. The likely method of victory here for Johnson could be through decision, as he would capitalize on his defensive tactics, and perhaps exploit moments to counterattack, making it a technical battle rather than just a straight-up brawl. Next fight, we have Brad Tavares versus Gregory Rodriguez. Brad Tavares brings a wealth of experience into the octagon with 20 wins. He stands at 6 feet 1 inch tall, and he has a 74-inch reach. Gregory Rodriguez has a record of 14 wins, 5 losses, but he has a height and reach advantage here, and he shows a higher significant strike rate per minute, throws about 6 per minute, with a greater accuracy as well at about 57%. Rodriguez's stats suggest he could dominate the striking game with his reach advantage and his precision. The radar chart comparison highlights Rodriguez's superior performance in striking and takedown defense, indicating a well-rounded skill set. Tavares, although not excelling in these areas, maintains a balanced profile, which could suggest a more conservative and strategic approach in this fight. The bar chart presents a visual representation for the two fighters' strengths. Rodriguez outshines Tavares in significant strike accuracy and takedown average, which may translate to a strategy that mixes striking with attempts to control the fight on the ground. Differential stats underline Rodriguez's advantage in significant strikes landed and takedown accuracy, showcasing his potential to outperform Tavares in both stand-up and grappling exchanges. Tavares may need to leverage his experience and find ways to counter Rodriguez's offensive capabilities. The 1000 fight simulations yielded a 55% win rate for Rodriguez, suggesting that his advantages in striking and grappling give him the slight edge over Tavares in these simulated outcomes. Model predictions overwhelmingly favor Rodriguez, and this consensus among those models indicates confidence in Rodriguez's ability to control the fight. Considering all of this data, I calculate a 66% chance of victory for Gregory Rodriguez. The analysis points towards Rodriguez leveraging his striking accuracy and takedown skills to secure his win, possibly by a knockout or submission due to his higher finishing rates in both areas. Tavares' path to victory likely involves using his experience to outmaneuver Rodriguez's aggressive style and exploit any possible openings. Up next, we have Robert Breischek versus Albert Duraev. Not a lot of data is available on these guys. Robert comes into this fight with a record of 17 wins, 5 losses. Although his reach and other stats aren't listed, his experience is pretty evident. Albert, on the other hand, has a slightly lesser record of 16 wins, 5 losses. He stands at 5 feet 11 inches tall and has a notable reach of 75 inches. Duraev's significant strike rate per minute is pretty low at 3 but his accuracy is pretty high at 54%, and he boasts a solid takedown average of 2, with an impressive takedown accuracy of 29%. So, Duraev on this radar chart shows potential to be both defensively solid and offensively threatening, particularly on the ground. Unfortunately, we don't have enough data to plot Robert's stats, but with the data that is available and all of the other information, I give Albert Duraev about a 59% chance of beating Robert. In the next fight, we have our co-main event, Dan Ige versus Andre Philly. The overall stat comparison presents a close match in physical attributes, with Ige being the slightly heavier fighter and Philly having a reach advantage. Ige's significant strike rate is marginally lower than Philly's, but his accuracy is notably higher at 50%. Philly's takedown average and accuracy are superior, showcasing his potential ground game advantage. 
The radar chart illustrates Ige's balanced skill set with a particular emphasis on takedown defense and significant strike accuracy, suggesting he might be more effective in stand-up exchanges. Philly, while less accurate, shows a more well-rounded shape, indicating versatility, especially with his takedown game. From the bar chart, we see Ige has an edge in significant strike defense, which could be critical in fending off Philly's higher volume of strikes. Philly's bars for takedown accuracy and average indicate his strategy may involve taking the fight to the mat. The differential stats highlights Ige's higher avoidance rate in strike landing, pointing towards his ability to control the distance and land effectively. Philly's stats suggest he'll be looking to utilize his reach and grappling skills to counter Ige's striking. The 1,000 fight simulation yield a nearly even split, with Philly edging out a win in 50.8% of the simulations. This suggests a highly competitive fight where either fighter has a strong chance to emerge victorious. The prediction models show a varied outlook, with some models slightly favoring Ige, while others, like the neural network model, give Philly a considerable advantage. The disparity underscores the unpredictable nature of this matchup. With all factors being considered, the final probability I calculate is a 57% chance of victory for Dan Ige. The fight is expected to showcase Ige striking against Philly's grappling, with Ige likely to keep the fight standing and possibly securing a win through a decision after a technical striking display. Next fight, we have our main event, Jack Hermanson vs. Joe Pfeiffer. The overall stat comparison indicates a close physical matchup, with Hermanson standing at 6 feet 1 inch tall. He has a reach of 77 inches, while Pfeiffer is slightly taller at 6 feet 2 inches tall, and he has a reach of 75 inches. Hermanson brings a wealth of experience with a record of 23 wins, 8 losses, and he has the advantage in significant strikes landed per minute at 5, Pfeiffer, he's younger, and he has a record of 12 wins, 2 losses. He shows a remarkable takedown accuracy of 83%, hinting at his grappling prowess. The radar chart highlights Hermanson's striking advantage with higher percentages in significant strikes landed and takedown defense, suggesting a well-rounded defensive game. Pfeiffer's radar, however, shows a significant edge in takedown accuracy and defense against significant strikes, indicating a strong grappling base and an ability to avoid damage. The bar chart comparison reveals that Hermanson's significant strike accuracy and volume are superior, suggesting he may control the stand-up fight. In contrast, Pfeiffer's higher takedown average and accuracy point to a strategy that will likely involve taking the fight to the ground. Differential stats show Hermanson's striking attempts and accuracy are his main advantages. Pfeiffer's advantages are not as pronounced, but include a higher takedown average and reach, which could be crucial in both striking and grappling exchanges. The 1,000 fight simulations give Hermanson a dominant win rate of 83% over Pfeiffer's 17%, indicating that Hermanson's experience and striking could be significant factors in the outcome of this fight. Model predictions, however, are leaning towards Joe Pfeiffer. Taking all of the data and the results into account, I calculate a 61% chance of victory for Joe Pfeiffer. Despite the simulations and certain model predictions favoring Hermanson, the final weighted prediction sees Pfeiffer's youth and grappling advantage as a key to securing his victory. Considering the fighter's stats and strengths, this fight is likely to be an intensely close, contested fight, especially on the ground, with Pfeiffer potentially winning by submission. So that's all for the fights. Here are the potential bets that I think might be worthwhile to consider based on the prediction model strengths and unanimous predictions along with the odds and the final probability of victory that we went over in this result column, and the returns for the money line bets if you place it at these odds. Thank you all for watching. Please like and subscribe as it will help keep me motivated in creating these videos. Running this data and analysis and prediction models and charts and graphs takes hours every day and week, so I'd greatly appreciate the support. See you all in the next one.